Hi again, uh, let's continue our discussion of phaser. And um, I've got my, my phaser game here in the window and you can see it's running and I've got my code here in Atom. And in the last video, we, you know, we kind of looked at import and export. In this video, I'd like to, um, before we actually get into actually building the game, let's kind of look at the features of Phaser and kind of get a feel for how Phaser works. If you can figure this library out, you can figure out any library. Um, so I'm looking at game scene right now and game scene extends scene. So essentially we've written game scene here. and We've defined two methods in it, preload and create. But since we're extending the scene class from phaser, we get a lot of other methods and properties that belong to scene. So everything that belongs to scene now also belongs to game scene. And we can't see those items here. Okay. This is why we can say this dot load because the load method belongs to scene. Okay. It's also why we can say this dot add because add belongs to scene. Okay. We don't see it here though. Okay this dot tweens is the same right so anytime we say this we're talking about a method or a property right we're trying to access a method or a property that belongs to the current instance of the class right um in in our case we've defined game scene so we could say this dot preload or this dot create and we would get these two methods but if we say you know this dot add or this dot you know tweens we, we're going to get the methods from scene because they exist here and if they don't exist here we'll get an error saying like hey you know um, you know, tweens is not defined or load is not defined or whatever it is, right? Okay. So what happened here? Well, why, why preload and create? Okay. Preload is used to load assets before the scene starts running, right? So like we can't run our, our code in our scene unless maybe all of the sounds and the, um, the images and things have been loaded up right so preload gives us a an opportunity to load assets into the scene and the the computer waits until like scene kind of is set up so that it waits for all these things to load before calling create okay so we call this to load anything that we need and so these are things that come from outside the program so these are like assets like you know logo png right and we could load other things some things we can generate within the program and they don't need to be loaded in advance but if it comes from outside of the system or outside of phaser you know it's an external file then we need to load it okay um, what does create do? Well, after we've loaded everything, we can create the scene. And this is kind of like initializing the scene. And when we initialize the scene, we might want to position game objects all over the place, like place them where they need to be in their starting position, you know, set their properties to their default value, you know, define colors and animations and things like that. And after create is done running, then the scene itself runs and we see the, the, the fruit of our labor, right? We see the image that we loaded, we see the animation that we created in, um, in create, okay? And we see the things that we've added. Now, this add line right here is interesting because just because you load something doesn't mean that we see it on the screen. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna comment this stuff out in create and when I do that and save it, you can see the, the game is running fine, but it's blank. Like I've loaded the logo here, I've preloaded it, but you know, it doesn't appear. So in order to see something, you have to call add on it, right? And what's gonna happen is this, we're gonna say this dot add an image, right? So we're gonna say this dot add dot image, and then we say where we wanna position the image and what the name of the asset is, like the key. And we, we you know, when you load something, you give it a, a key value, like a name or an ID, right? And we use the logo here, okay? So these have to match. If we use a different name here, then it won't be able to find the image that we're talking about, right? So when we do add, what happens is Phaser creates a game object and adds it to the display list. And the display list is a list of things that Phaser needs to draw on the screen. So, you know, you can load assets that you use later, like you don't have to use them immediately. You know, they'll only get displayed when you add them, okay? Okay, so cool, let's, let's put that to, to work here, right? So what I'd like to do 
is I'd like to add a new a new element to the screen. And I don't need to load this one because I'm gonna generate it within the program. So what I'll do is I'll make a constant here and I'll call it message, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna say this dot add some text. So a text object is a little different than an image. It has the same X and Y coordinates. So I'll put this one at 100 and 100. And then the third parameter is not the name of the asset, but the text that the text object will display. So what I'll do is I'll put hello here and then save. And then I can see that hello showed up on the screen here, right? And this is like 100 pixels from the left and 100 pixels down from the top. And if you change this, like if I made this like, you know, uh, 70, let's make it like 50 pixels, right? You can see hello kind of moves over closer to the left, okay? And if I, you know, make it 150, then it goes a little further to the right. So I'm gonna change this to 100. You know, and we can change the Y value. So if I make this like Y of 300 and save it, you can see that the hello was here and then now it's down here at the bottom. And if I change it back to 100, you know, it goes back up to where we were, okay? So that's pretty good. Um, let's talk about input for a second. So, you know, JavaScript has add event listener and you can listen for mouse events and you can listen for keyboard events. Phaser kind of handles that for us. You know, it kind of optimizes that for games. So they have their own event listener system. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this dot input. So this is where all the input goes. So you can use different input devices. Um, you know, you can use keyboard, the mouse. I'm gonna use import and then I'm gonna say on or input and then say on. And here is where I'm gonna generate an event in phaser. So the event that I wanna generate is a pointer down event. Right, so it's gotta be spelled pointer down, all lowercase. And this function um, takes the, the event handler, like the name or the type of the event, and then it also takes a function. And I'm gonna write an ES6 function. So this is just like, you know, a regular JavaScript function that might look like this, right, with the uh, function keyword parentheses and curly brackets, but I'm gonna remove function type the equal sign and the arrow, and then follow it with the curly braces. Okay, and this is an ES6 function. It's kind of shorter to type. Um, it's kind of more modern, right? It has a little couple advantages with scope that we'll talk about later. Um, but what's gonna happen now is when you click the, the mouse in the window, when you press down on the button, that's a pointer down event it will run this the code inside this function. We don't have any code yet. Uh, well, let's add some. So I'm gonna put the cursor between the two curly braces. And what I wanna do when this happens is I wanna say message.text. So here on, on this line, we created a new text object and phaser returned a reference to that text object. So now we captured it in this variable called message. So if we wanna to talk to the text object here on the screen, we will talk to it through message and it has some methods and some properties. One of the properties is text and that's the text that we input into or set it to display in the text object, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna say text um, should say ouch when the pointer is down. Right, so I'll save that. I'll click in the window and you can see it says ouch, right? And so when I press down, it says ouch. And when I release, it still says ouch, right? So if we wanted the text to change when you release the cursor, we'll do that again. We'll say import or input dot on. And what we wanna look for is a pointer up event, right? So pointer up and uh, we'll use another ES6 style function and we'll say, you know, message dot text equals hello, right? So we'll save that. And now when I press down, I get ouch. And when I release, it says hello, okay? So that's just a quick overview of, of, of what preload is doing and what create is doing. And then a little look at, you know, some of the internal methods like this dot add image, this dot add text. So we can use that to create text, right? And um, a little bit of a look at the um, event messaging system built in, right? So 
um, this is our input. You know, we say this dot input, and then we say on, and then we define a type and give it a handler. And this is actually a lot like you know, add event listener that you might be used to, right? Because here you would take the type of event and you would put the handler here, right? So you know, a type might be you know mouse down. And the handler could be an ES6 or other type of function that you put here, right? And it's actually just the same thing. The difference is like where we, you know, here where we say this dot input and we say on instead of uh, add event listener, right? Okay, great. So thanks for watching, and I hope that that's kind of giving you a little bit of better idea of how Phaser operates.